YouTube, welcome to my studio. myself in this first video and tell you how I got to be where I'm at today. I've always been a creative person as a child was always drawing and sketching and coloring and coloring books and I just really wanted that to be my future. Well I didn't think I could make a living at it so I attempted to go to college for a couple different things and I it just didn't work out. My parents were very supportive and I came back home and just went to a local community college and I got my associates in fine art. Then I worked at like a graphic design company, a couple of companies that did like designing of business cards and that kind of thing. And I, and I enjoyed that and it was good for me to have that experience. I wanted to be a stay at home mom. So I got out of the workforce and started just painting a lot. I started doing art shows and then I got into doing craft shows back in the day when craft shows were huge and people were making a really good living doing shows. And I did uh, small, like five by sevens. I think the largest was maybe an eight by 10 original watercolor paintings. And they were in the, I guess you'd call it you know, like the country look, like teddy bears, bunnies, that kind of thing. And Santa Clauses and snowmen, of course. And I happened to be at a show about an hour away from my house and a gentleman come in and purchased a Santa painting from me and he asked if I did wholesale. And I'm like, wholesale? What is, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> so he explained what it was. He invited me after the show. My friend and I invited us to their store. Their store was right down the road. It was called Dick's Burrow General Store in the Ann Arbor, Michigan area. I thought it was awesome because I'm like, if I can paint paintings and then just ship them to stores instead of doing craft shows every weekend, I could be home more. I mean, the whole reason I got out of the workforce was so I could be home. So I started just going to local gift shops in my area and there were a lot more of them back then as well. And I would sell my, my little watercolor paintings wholesale to these shops. One of the shops I went to was about an hour away. The owners of the shop were not there. They said, oh, well, the owners are at a buying, they're on their buying trip. And I said, well, what do you mean on a buying trip? She said, well, they go to this wholesale show in Pennsylvania and that's where they buy all the products for the store. And of course my you know, light bulb goes off in my head and I'm like, you mean I don't have to go to all these stores on foot? Okay, I wasn't on foot, yeah, I was driving, but you know what I mean? Door to door to sell my stuff. I could go to a show and they would come to me all of them across the whole nation would, you know, come to me and purchase. So I waited about a week and I went back to that store and I talked to the owners and they told me it was, you know, Market Square in Pennsylvania and I signed up for the show. It's a long story that first show. We had so many learning lessons and so many quirky, weird things happened at that show. But anyways, I got into the wholesale market selling my work across the nation and some overseas customers as well. Everything was going great until everything started being made over in China. All of my competitors, I guess you could say, started having their things printed and framed over in China. We couldn't compete because we did everything by hand and it was all American made and we painted our frames, we sanded them and stained them, we did all our framing, we did everything. We couldn't compete with the prices and our sales dropped. Well, luckily I got into licensing about the time that was, you know, on a decline, licensing was going up. I signed with an agent in 1997 and my licensing career shot like a rocket. I mean, it was crazy how fast that business grew for me. I still do license my artwork now on some products, but not like I used to. That market became saturated probably about, I don't know, seven years ago and it's changed completely from when I started licensing. 
at the time there was an influx of artists into the marketplace, that was also the time that my agent and I were going our separate ways. And I just lost my passion for art licensing for a while because it was really traumatic leaving my agent. Well, luckily in 2004, I started designing Punch Needle. If you're not familiar with Punch Needle, you'll see that later on. So I designed Punch Needle and I sold patterns to needle workshops and quilt shops across the nation. That was in 2004 and then in 2013 I added cross stitch to it. So it was kind of like this. So my wholesale business was doing great and as it started declining, licensing started increasing and then as licensing was declining, my pattern business was growing. So. I always have more than one iron in the fire just for that reason. I don't want to rely on one thing to make money with my creative business. Now the bulk of my business is designing and distributing my cross stitch and punch needle patterns. That is the bulk of my business. I do still license my work. I do have an Etsy shop where I sell my original paintings and all of that. So that's kind of how I got to where I am today. Now you might be thinking, what is this? create tube. Why, why, why is she creating this new thing? <laughs> well, I will tell you, I want to do create tube and I'm really hoping that other artists will jump on board and do what I'm doing using the word create tube. December 1st of 2018, I started a floss tube channel. Floss tube has been around for many years. What floss tube is, is basically about needle art. So anyone that does um, cross stitch, punch needle, there's people on there that do knitting, you know, quilters, but it's just like a weekly, bi-weekly or monthly update of what that person has been working on. And watching their videos is entertaining and you get to know them and it's just fun. So it's become this huge community. Well, I want that community to grow in the art world too. Not just art, but crafts. I mean, it's sculpture. Uh, well, when I said not just art, I meant not just painting because I'm a canvas painter. That's what I like to do. That is my true passion. <laughs> but I want people that make jewelry or make you know, sculptures or make teddy bears. Whatever you do that you do creatively, whether you sell your work or not, I want you to join CreateTube and I want you to invite us into your workplace or your studio and just, you know, your first video could be, you know, about you, what, how you got to where you're at, just like I just did. And then every, you know, week, I think I'm going to do mine every other week because I do every week with floss tube. And I don't want to overwhelm myself by doing this every week too. So I think mine's going to be bi-weekly and I will get on here and just show you. It won't be as wordy as what I'm talking about now because this is just an introduction. But I will be showing you my works in progress. I will show you my finished paintings. I can show you some of my previously painted paintings. Uh, my haul, which will be art supplies and different things that I purchased for my art business. And any announcements, maybe I have a new licensee that I want to share with you. And just, just basically talk about what's going on in my studio. So, moving right along. <laughs> I'm going to start with um, my works in progress. So my works in progress is this eagle painting here. My best friend lives in Tennessee. I live in Michigan. So... We decided that every Wednesday for What You Paint Wednesday, we would get together and create and chit chat. We use Zoom and we go live every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and we paint together and we chit chat with people that are on the live stream with us. And it is a total blast. We love it. We have so much fun doing it. So I've been working on this, I think, for three weeks now. We are on uh, what you paint Wednesday for about an hour and a half. It's on my Facebook page. So I will have a link in the description box below where you can just link to that. So this is what I'm working on and I'm really hoping to get this done. It'll probably be another couple weeks because there's going to be some words added down here. So 
that is my work in progress. I do have a finish. I'm so excited. I did this painting here. I actually painted this live on Facebook as well. And the reason I did that is because with the shelter in place order that most states are on now, people are home. People are bored. <laughs> and I'm hope, hopefully inspiring people to get their paints and their brushes back out and do a little painting with me. So I went live all last week, not all last week, I think I went live, it was two days in a row. I went live Tuesday and Wednesday during the day and I created this painting. I will have a link below where if you want to create this painting, I have the entire thing recorded and uploaded to YouTube. So you you can watch me step by step on how to create this and what colors I used. And you can hear me chit chat with people that are on the live stream with me. And then I have some haul. I'm so excited because I am starting, starting this Tuesday. So in a couple of days from now, I am starting a, it's called CW Live and CW stands for Creative Whims. Creative Whims Live. It's a membership group, private group on Facebook. So if you purchase the membership, you get to paint with me. It's every other week. And then the alternating weeks is a live Q and A. However, if we are working on a project and we don't get it done on that Tuesday that we start the painting, then the following Tuesday we'll, we'll finish that painting and then do the Q&A afterwards. So that is starting. I will have a link about that below as well because I'm really excited about it. If you are interested in that, I would love for you to join me. It's going to be so much fun because it's live. So we can talk, we can chat, you can ask questions. What are you doing? You didn't, you know, cause sometimes I forget to call out a paint color or something and y'all can, you know, call me out on that and say, Hey, what color, what did you mix to get that color or whatever? So I ended up buying everything for the course that I asked the members to purchase. So that came in this week and I'm super stoked. My favorite paint brand is Golden. So I have all the Golden paints that I require for the, I don't require, I sh shouldn't say that because you can use whatever paint brand you want. But they're acrylic paints, I prefer Golden and I have the supply list and everything for the members to be able to purchase that. So I have all of those. I also got three tubes of my favorite crackle medium, Jasonia Crackle, the best crackle medium on the planet. I also bought three paint brushes because I wanted to have brand new brushes like all of my members, and we have three different sizes that we use. This is my absolute favorite paintbrush or um, brand of paintbrush. So I will put a link in the description box below where you can watch. An, I have a YouTube video right on this channel that talks about my favorite brushes, also how to clean them and take care of them. So if you're on my channel watching this, just watch some of my other videos that talk about that. And what else did I get in here? Oh, some black gesso. I mean, you can never have too much black gesso. So that's my haul this week. What I also want to do with my create tube is I want to go over some sort of topic each time I do a video. So this week's topic is Etsy. Why I recommend people use Etsy to sell their creative wares or their creative Creative Whims, okay? Creative Whims is my business name. My business name is Teresa Kogut's Creative Whims Incorporated. And I feel that that suits me so well because I do a lot of different creative things. I paint and I design cross stitch and punch needle. I do some sculpty sculptures, little figurines and things. I haven't done that in quite a while, but I would love to get back into it. I used to make jewelry. So that's why Creative Whims became my business name. But anyways, back on Etsy. I have a list of, I think it's a list of 11. I wanted to do 10, but then something came to me and I'm like, well, I gotta share that. Okay, so why I recommend that you have an Etsy shop if you wanna sell your creative products. And let me just tell you, you can have a website. You can pay someone to build your website. You can build it yourself. I have built one, I, I built, two Shopify shops 
Then I have um, gatheredreamcreate.com and I have teresacogut.com and I have an Etsy shop. I have, <laughs> I have built plenty of websites to know that Etsy is really the best way to go unless you have the money to have someone design a really kick <laughs> website. The reason I, I used to sell on my website, TeresaCogut.com, but I quit doing that and I'll tell you why. I used to sell like my teddy bear calendar on there and I would sell it to people all over the world. Well, on my website, the way I had it set up, I didn't have like a shopping cart. It went, mine went through PayPal and the shipping was always way lower than what it actually cost. And so I was getting killed on the shipping. Also, if somebody, let's say, bought four punch needle patterns and I had the shipping set at $2 a pattern or a dollar a pattern, I think it was a dollar a pattern for a while, but it cost me more than that to ship it, but I was okay with that. But let's say they ordered, you know, some people order six, seven patterns. Then they're paying $7 in shipping when it only costs maybe three or four. So it just, the shipping was a nightmare. Also, the thing that concerned me was sales tax. My accountant said that some of the states might really start cracking down on online purchases because they want their cut. So basically, I live in Michigan. If I sell to you in California, you have a sales tax for online purchases. And if I don't charge you that, then I could get in trouble down the line. Then if I do charge you that, number one, I have to know what your sales tax is. And that's, you know, a constant thing to try to keep track of. And then I would have to figure out how to pay that every month to California, to Missouri, to Indiana, all the states. I don't want to deal with that. I don't have time for that. I'm a one woman show. I do have my husband, my wonderful husband, Kevin. He helps me big time with my pattern business, but all the online things and the websites and stuff, that's all me. So that just, let me just tell you, that's why I went Strictly to Etsy, I took everything off my website that's for sale and put it on Etsy. Number one, setting up an Etsy shop is so easy. It's, they make it really, really easy. It's free to set it up, okay? Now, it's also very easy to list your products. So when I, I have, I don't even know how many I have now, but I probably have over 50 to I don't know, 70 punch needle patterns, different patterns, okay? So when I list one, when I went to list a, the next one, all I hit was copy. So it kept all of my information. All I had to do was change out the picture and change the title. That's it. All the other information was saved. So that is the beauty of Etsy. Uh, number three, the fees are low. So to list something, it's 20 cents. That's it, 20 cents. And then, uh, there's a transaction fee that's three and a half percent when something sells. Now, also keep in mind, if someone pays with a credit card or their PayPal, you're going to have that fee taken out as well. Just bake that into your price. Just remember, you know, approximately 5% is going to go to fees. And if you keep that in mind, then you can price your products accord accordingly. Uh, number four, it's easy to be found. Listen to some of these stats. The end of December 31st of 2018, there were 39.4 million buyers that bought from Etsy. Now, there's also 2.1 million sellers on Etsy. But you are uniquely you. By doing YouTube, by having your Instagram, by doing social media, you can have your Etsy shop linked to all of those things. So you'll see that your Etsy shop can grow organically just by like Pinterest even. So when you have a listing, Etsy makes it so easy. It has the little Twitter icon, Facebook, Pinterest, I think even LinkedIn. But you can go, after you list something, you can go post it on all those social media platforms. Number five of why you should have an Etsy shop is it tracks inventory. For instance, I license my work. Every year I sell my teddy bear calendar on my Etsy shop. When I get those in, I put 100 in the 
uh, inventory or the quantity. And then I know like when it sells out because of my, my other website, TeresaCogat.com, I didn't have that. So I would sell out of something and I, before I realized it, I'd have two more orders for it. Then I'd have to disappoint those people and email them and refund their money and say, I'm sorry, I was out of inventory. I can't get any more. It was a nightmare. Number six, they figure out the shipping for you. You put in, you can have custom shipping, uh, what do you call them? Customized shipping for each of your products. So for instance, I have, you know, my patterns and then I have prints on wood. Then I have just flat unframed prints. And then I have small original painting. I have large original painting. And I set those up in Etsy. So it makes it really easy if I'm listing a large original painting, I know the shipping is gonna be more. So you can set it up that way or you can set up where Etsy figures it out for you and you just put in your zip code and how much the product weighs and the size box or whatever it is you're gonna put it in. You can also choose if you wanna just ship to people in the United States, you can choose which countries you wanna to ship to. So they make shipping really easy. Number seven, the sales tax issue. They handle all of that. They charge the sales tax. They know which states charge what and they pay it for you. You don't even have to think about it. Number eight is Etsy tracks where your customers and your people that come to your Etsy shop, they track where they're coming from. So you can see, are they coming from Pinterest? Are they coming from Facebook? Are they just on Etsy and type in punch needle and you came up? Uh, so you can kind of see where your traffic's coming from, where you can put more effort into. It's really imperative that you know where your traffic's coming from and that way you can uh, manipulate that a little bit with advertising or just pinning more of your stuff on Pinterest. Number nine, oh my gosh, if you want to have a sale, Etsy makes it so easy. Or if you want to give, like for instance, I have a Facebook group. I can give my people in the group a coupon code and it's specifically for them. So it's kind of one of the perks of being part of my Facebook group. So they make it really, really easy to do that. Number 10, the community and the help that you get. If you get stuck on something, oh my gosh, they have tons of information. They also have forums that you can go in and uh, ask questions and people will get back with you and that's maybe not about the technical part of it But if you have you know, how do I price my things or you know There's a ton of information right on the Etsy site that should help you out And then number 11 and my last one is if you need to refund a customer It is really really easy or if you want to message a customer so when you go into your orders you see all your orders. Well, right next to it, it has where you can print it, the, print the order, you can message the customer, you can issue a refund. I issue refunds for shipping overcharges because it, you know, shipping isn't a perfect science. Even Etsy struggles with it. If I send something to somebody and Etsy charged them $8 for shipping and it only came to $5.50, when I go into Etsy to show that customer that their order shipped, that's when I issue them their refund for the shipping overcharges. Number 12, I'm making it up as I go because you know what, there is another amazing feature and I just mentioned it. When you ship a customer's order, you'd go right into uh, orders and you can hit that you shipped it, you can give them the tracking number, you can write a little note telling them thank you. That is golden because that customer now is set at ease knowing that their order has shipped. With my website, I would get emails constantly. I was always fielding questions and issues. Sometimes orders even got missed because when I got an order on my website, PayPal is supposed to send me an email and let me know that I sold something. That didn't always happen. So orders were getting missed. I mean, it was a hassle. So I'm telling you right now, <laughs> Get an Etsy shop if you want to sell your creative products. That's it. That is all for this week, y'all. 
I can't wait to be back here again with you. And hopefully by next time I see you, I will have my eagle painting finished and I can show you what we've been creating in CW Live. Matter of fact, I did want to show you our first lesson, which is this Tuesday. We're painting it on a 12 by 12. I have a cradled board here, but if you prefer canvas, you can do that or a canvas panel. And then we're going to be creating this really pretty angel with the flowers. So that is our first lesson on Tuesday, April 7th, 2020. So join us if you can. And then I mentioned earlier, and I forgot to show you, I mentioned that I designed punch needle and cross stitch. Most people know what cross stitch is, but many people do not know what punch needle is. So I just want to show you real quick. This is what punch needle is. If you want to learn more about, I don't think it's focusing. If you want to learn more about my needlework business with my cross stitch and punch needle, I'll have a link below where you can join me over at the floss tube channel and you can learn more and see more of my needlework. All right guys, so that's it. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time. And don't forget, create every day. Bye now.